SwiftUI's Geometry Reader allows you to use its size and coordinates to determine a child view's layout, and is a key to creating some of the most remarkable effects in SwiftUI. You should always keep in mind SwiftUI's three-step layout system when working with Geometry Reader. First, the parent poses a size for the child. Then the child uses that to determine its own size. And finally, the parent uses that to position the child appropriately. In its most basic usage, what a geometry reader lets us do is read the size that's proposed by the parent, then use that to manipulate our view. For example, we could use a geometry reader to make a text view take up 90% of the available width regardless of its content. We could say down here, we have a geometry reader with a proxy coming in. Then inside there is a text Hello world, like so. I get this thing a frame width of proxy dot size dot width times 0.9, then a background of red so it's nice and visible. So this proxy parameter that can comes in is a geometry proxy object that contains a proposed size, any safe area insets have been applied, plus a method of reading frame values that we'll look at at the moment. Now Joint Reader has an interesting side effect that might catch you out at first. The view that gets returned has a flexible preferred size, which means it'll expand to take up more space as needed. You can see this in action. If you place this geometry reader into a V stack like this, and then just try and place some text below it. So down here, text, more text, where the background, Daisy, with the background of blue. Like that you can see it's pushed down to the very bottom of the screen, because the geometry reader is taking up all the remaining space. And you can see it for yourself in action, just add a, a background green, for example, to the geometry reader, and you'll see it filling up all the space. Now this is a preferred size, not an absolute size. So it means it's still flexible depending on what its parent allows. Now when it comes to reading the frame of view, Geometry Proxy does provide a frame in method rather than simple properties. This is because the concept of a frame includes X and Y coordinates, which don't make much sense in isolation. Do you want the views absolute X and Y coordinates or the X and Y coordinates compared to their parent? Swifty Y calls these options coordinate spaces, and those two in particular are called the global space, which is measuring our views frame relative to the whole screen then the local space, which is measuring our views frame relative to its parent. We can also create custom coordinate spaces by attaching the coordinate space modifier to a view. Any child of that view can read its frame relative to that coordinate space. To demonstrate how these coordinate spaces work, we're going to make some example views in various stacks. Attach a custom coordinate space to the outermost view, then add an on tap gesture to one of the views inside it, so we can print out the frame globally, locally and using our custom coordinate space. Let's try it out now. First things first, I'm gonna make an inner view doing a lot of the work here. We'll say there's a struct called inner view, which is a view. The body for this thing is a H stack containing the text of the word left, then a geometry reader with a proxy coming in, with a text saying center, I have this thing a background blue so you can see how it stands out on the screen. We'll then add to the text an on tap gesture. It'll print out various coordinate information. We'll say, for example, that the global center is string interpolation proxy dot frame in the global coordinate space dot mid x. So the middle x position of this uh, proxy, which is the whole space of the Jointer is it attached to. That's the X, and I'll do uh, X and the same thing for mid Y. So we know how much space it takes in X and Y coordinates. I'll then copy and paste this twice more. So we have once here, once here, and like that. And we're going to say that actually this second one isn't the global center, it's a custom center. And the last one is a local center. So different coordinate spaces. And so now rather than saying frame in global here and here, this needs to be frame in dot a named namespace called custom. 
and the same down here, like that. So, oops, two named coordinate spaces, both called custom like that. Then for our local center, we'll use dot local. So relative to the parent rather than relative to the screen edge, like that. And that's our inner view. I'm gonna wrap around that and out of view. And this thing, again, it's a view. This thing will have a V stack with a text of uh, top. Then our inner view with a background color. Here, background of uh, just green is fine. Then a text of bottom, like that. And finally, we can go ahead and use our main content view, this one here, delete all its current code, and say instead, I want out of view here with a background of red, and then a coordinate space called custom. Like that, the final coordinate space attached to this thing. Uh, that's more or less correct. I think I made a few small mistakes here. Let's try and fix them up real fast. I'm going to make this slightly better. I want to write text after the geometry reader, like this. There we go. I'll also color the geometry reader a different color so you can see it stand out. Let's do background orange, like so. Beautiful. Okay. Go ahead and run the code. Just just press Command R. Run the code back so you think. Uh, when you're ready, press Center. And I'll print out all our values here, and they're somewhat similar, but some interesting variations that hopefully show you the full range of how these frames work. We've got this global center of 191, meaning the center of our geometry proxy, this thing down here, center vertically here is 191 points. So I tend to horizontal, sorry, center x 191, 191 points from the left edge of the screen. Now it's not the dead center because the word left is smaller than the word right. There's actually more spacing here, so it actually occurs just a bit to the left of the actual center of the screen. We then have a global Y center of 440. So the center of this thing is 440 points down from the top edge of the screen. Again, not dead center of the screen. In this case, because on my device, an iPhone 15 Pro, there is more safe area at the top than there is at the bottom. So it's actually pushed slightly down the way. Then we've got a custom center of X here. Uh, this means, again, where the left edge or whichever view owns that custom coordinate space, which for us is the out of view. And that attaches to the most out of view we have, and therefore it also goes edge to edge horizontally. So it's the same number as our global center that hasn't changed. But we do have a custom center Y of 381. This value is smaller than the global of 440 because out of view does not extend into the safe area. Then we have a local center X of 153. The center of the geometry reader is 153 points from the left edge of its direct container. And then we have the local center Y of 350, the smallest value for the Y here. So again, that's 30 points from its direct container. Now, which coordinate space you want to use depends on what question you want to answer. Do you want to know where the space is on the whole screen? Use the global space. Do you want to know where this view is compared to its parent? Use a local space. Do you want to know where this view is relative to some other view? That's where you use a custom space.